Hello and welcome everyone to this video on implementing conditional steps in SAP Workflow by Zaran Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zaran Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss implementing conditional steps in Workflow. Now see what is the meaning of conditional steps here. So for that purpose, suppose if you want to create a condition like if and else that you mainly implement in any web program. So you can use this particular concept and for achieving this, you are required to create a workflow container. And in that container, what you will do, you will store some data. And after storing that data, you can perform the conditional step according to your requirement that you want. So this is are the things that we are going to discuss here in implementing conditional steps in workflow. And for that purpose, what we will do, we will take a requirement and our requirement is, let's take a requirement first. Uh, okay, let's take a requirement. Uh, we will be creating two variables, two variables, uh, if first one is greater than or equal to second one, then I want my workflow to trigger for leave request approval. Leave request approval. All right. So first let's create a con container workflow container first. What we will do, we'll go to SWDD transaction code and we'll click on create button to create a new workflow for us then see we are required to create a workflow container so we'll double click on to create a workflow container the first one what i will do is i will give a name as where one for my variable one where one and i will give a short description for variable one and I will take int1 for my data dictionary type here. Then in the properties, I will mark important export. Also, we can give some initial values if you want. So, currently, I am giving initial value as uh, suppose 2. Okay. This one, my var1. Now, I will creating on var2. I will be creating var2 here. So just give the element and the name where to and I will give a short description for it variable two. In the data a web dictionary data type, I will give the type name as int one. In the properties, we will go and we will select import and export again. Then I will click on this OK button. So see what is happening around here is we have got created our var1 and var2 workflow container and uh, one more thing I just forgot to give the initial value. So I have given two value there and now I am giving this as 4. Okay. See so now I have created my workflow container. Next thing what I need to create is the conditional steps so the conditional step what are the condition here right click on it go to okay oh i made a mistake create uh condition yeah see so this is my condition conditional step and here i will give a condition my first will be expression will be var1 and here what i will select greater than equal to 
and the second expression I will be selecting where to click on this OK button. And if the condition is true, what I will do here is uh, I will go for a user decision for my leave request approval. That if my this condition is true, I will go to user decision and I will send a workflow to my reporting manager will be assigned as an agent for my user decision. And if the condition is false, I will give as workflow completed. Now click on this OK button. See what is happening here. First we have got is uh, workflow completed. All right. So here I have created a conditional step. And the condition is based on this particular container value. Okay. In case of when work is, he is selecting false, if this condition is not true, then what it will happen here, the workflow will be completed. And if it is true, I will create a user decision. So create user decision. And here what will happen here? So my reporting manager will receive this particular mail. For that purpose, what you are required to do is uh, you will assign the name of the user here. For my current requirement, what I will do is I will assign workflow initiator so that this will be triggered to mine itself. And I will give a title here. So let's just give a title approve or reject leave. Okay, approve or reject, leave. And uh, you can also give the name of the parameters here or you can use the contain, workflow containers that you have decide, designed here for giving any kind of data to you. If you want to pass some data to your reporting manager like your ID, your employee name. So this kind of thing you can pass using these parameters. And in the decision text, just give approve, leave, outcome name as approve. And the second decision that I want to mark is reject leave. And the outcome name should be reject one. Now what we can do is uh, just click on this OK button and see your user decision has been created. And here, on the basis of approve and reject, you are required to perform a certain action. So on the basis of approve, right click on it, go to create button. What I will do is I will click on this send mail to send a mail to myself. So either you can assign here a username or you can assign, uh, see what you can do, you can assign email here. But I will simply want it to be workflow initiator so that it will return the mail to me. So that I can show you that by our testing for, for the testing purpose. So if leave has been approved, which means approved leave, uh, approve leave. And here what I will do is hi user, your leave request has been accepted. Now click on this OK button and assign the abbreviation name uh, workflow accepted. Press enter, assign the package and press enter and assign the transport request. Now see what is happening here. My approved leave for my approval I have created a step and the step is to send mail. Then on the reject right click on it. Bit. OK, what I need to do is I Click on create button and here we will go to send mail, reject, leave. Uh, what I will do here is I will give the name hi user your leave request has been rejected. All right. Just click on this OK button. Give the name and abbreviation name for it. So 
so I'm giving the name as rejected, assign the package and transport request. So this is the thing that uh, we are required to understand here. Now my work is done and how it is done here, I've created the workflow and my leave has been approved or rejected based on that will be approved or rejected. First one will always be the conditional. So click on this activate button to activate it. Press enter. Now see, workflow saved and activated. Now let's execute it. and see what is happening here. The first variable one, the initial value is two and four that we have assigned already. Now, if you want to change it, we can change it from here. But uh, the condition is should variable one should be greater than equal to. See, if, so if I'll click on this execute button, what it will happen here? It, it will show the workflow has been completed. See, current state completed. Go to workflow log, and as you can see the state has been completed. Now, what the reason for that? The reason for that is we have already given the condition and the condition is if the condition is not true, which is false, then it will go to the workflow completed and it will, the next step will be workflow completed here. So now let's go for the second step. Uh, the second condition, so let's make it to five. Press enter. Now click on this execute button and see my workflow has been triggered here. So what we do will happen now, the only thing that is going to happen here is my reporting manager will receive this workflow in his SBWP inbox. SBWP is the transaction code for business workflows, workplace where my reporting manager is going to receive this mail. So if I'll click on this approve, I will go see the workflow log is approved. And uh, it will select here as reject. What you will see, uh, go to the workflow log and see the status is reject. The next thing that uh, uh, we are required to do is, uh, no need to do anything else, just change it to two and click on execute and see our workflow has been completed. So what is the meaning of it here? What we actually did, we created two containers, we stored some value and based on that what we do is we perform a conditional step. Condition are similar to if or else that we perform in our programming. So the same thing is happening here. If uh, my or variable one is greater than variable two, then it is going to user decision and this user decision will be assigned to my reporting manager and based on that what you will do, he will be performing a certain decisions which can be approved or reject leave. So if you will be approving it, I will be receiving the mail and if you will be rejecting it, uh, I will be receiving the mail for the same. And if this condition is not satisfied, then in that situation what is happening here is it the workflow has been completed. So this is the most important thing that we need to understand it and all the steps we can see has been added into this particular steps area. All right. So this is all about our conditional steps in workflow. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.